I'm Lilia Abram, and even though I traveled here from Washington, D.C., I am a Memphian. I was born and raised here. I matriculated at Lemoyne Owen College, and in fact, I'm a second generation Lemoyne Owen College graduate. My parents graduated in the early 40s. To give you another interesting piece of information about me, in the 1960s, in fact, 1968, during the sanitation strike here in Memphis, I was working on my PhD in environmental engineering with a focus on sanitation in hopes of making the job better and safer for the people who do the hard work in my profession. Memphis, you have a problem. Memphis is the U.S. city with the highest energy burden in the U.S. Energy burden is the percentage of your income that is allocated to pay your electricity bill. Among the top 10 U.S. cities in the U.S. with the highest energy burden, Memphis scores worse in every demographic study. Across all households, across low-income households, across African-American households, and rental units. This fact translates to energy poverty. Memphis actually, however, has among the lowest residential energy rates in the country. Now you tell me, think about it for a minute. How can you have among the lowest residential rates in the country and still have the highest energy burden in the country? And this energy burden, again, translates to energy poverty when one tries to pay their electricity bill at the expense of other bills in the house. Let me briefly give you a perspective. The average household in America pays about 3% of their income for energy. Those of you here in Memphis, average household, 6 to 7%. And low-income households in Memphis pay anywhere from 13 to 20% of their income just to try and pay their electricity bills. Now, your city officials and leaders, they are aware of this problem, and they have crafted solutions with the focus on the low-income communities to help them with financing and to upgrade their homes. But statistics say, the data say, Memphis has the burden and not a piece of Memphis which dictates that Memphis needs to try to come together to solve this problem. My idea is very simple, but probably not easy to implement, and it is the do-it-yourself approach where Memphis needs to come together, city officials move out of the way and allow a platform for Memphis as a whole to engage to solve this problem. Let me give you two examples that happened in the past where Memphis came together to solve its own problems where our leaders were in our way. Let me go back to the sanitation strike. You know, those men had been working for 10 years 
trying to get recognition and acceptance by the city. They tried to get a union starting in 1960. They didn't get a union to 64. They felt, okay, we have the union. We can go to collective bargaining. We can get the city to the table. No way. In 1968, after the crushing death of two of their workers, they said, we've had enough. They organized, they negotiated, demonstrated there was no choice but to strike. And they resolved, because they were organized, we will stay out until our demands are met. In April 1968, the city gave in and their demands were met. They had to strike maybe a few more times, but they didn't. Their demands were met. Let me give you another example of where Memphis came together to solve their problems. You remember when they were building Interstate 40? Interstate 40 went from one coast to the other coast in lightning speed, going through every community and wiping out those communities that looked like me. When he got to Overton Park, what happened? No, 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 no. And the city said, yes, 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 yes. And they said, no, 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 no. And because they were organized, they had financial capabilities, and they were influential, they were able to resist. They went all the way to the Supreme Court, and because the city officials were disobeying their own rules and regulations, the community prevailed. Now, what is the common thread running through two historically different examples? The community who was impacted had a direct hand in solving their problem. We can glean from those two examples how this energy burden needs to be solved here in Memphis. Fifty years ago, the leaders of Memphis operated this city to their end. And the way they operated this city was anathema to us. We were angry, we resisted, we prevailed. We changed Memphis, and we changed society. Memphis, you are the poster child for energy burden in the U.S. And this is because of the policies that your leaders have chosen to take to operate your city. But you seem to be resigned. I don't see any anger. Resignation is not going to remove the energy burden problem here in Memphis. It is time for you to be creative and energized again. It is time for you to challenge the conventional wisdom of this is the way that a city should be operated. It is time for you to tell the city you need to be transparent, challenge them, and come together with your own solutions and policy solutions for running this city differently, new ideas, fresh ideas, change Memphis as a unified Memphis come up with new ideas and help Memphis achieve the goal and change society of the dream of equal and fair economic opportunity for all. You know, it's time for you to get rid of being that poster child. I am looking forward to reading the next example on how Memphis came together as Memphis to break the cycle of energy poverty. Thank you.